Before I started this YouTube channel, I used to be the normiest of normies when it came to video games. All I bought and played were games like GTA, Minecraft, COD and basically any game that was popping at that very moment. Starting this YouTube channel has made me expand my horizon, introducing me to games such as Journey and Little Witch No Beta. Games I would have never cared for just a few years ago. Now today, I'll be using the platform that made me expand my horizon to expand your horizon as well. This video is the very first episode of a series I'll be calling Shining a Light On. Throw it flashbang! Where I'll be going over unknown slash indie games that are most definitely worth your time. It's essentially the same as my regular reviews, but by smacking a label on it, you'll immediately know I'll be covering a game you likely haven't heard of yet. It's more of a convenience thing, you know. Now that I've lost half the viewers because of an unnecessary explanation, let's get to the game I'll be covering in this video. This is Persephone. Persephone is a puzzle game developed by Momopie and released on Steam on January 21st, 2021. The game had already been out for a short while on Android and Xbox, but there is barely any footage to be found. Most of the YouTube results just redirect you to a Smite character and as of writing this video, the Steam page has a total of 3 reviews after 2 weeks. It's safe to say nobody knows about the existence of this game, but let me tell you that you might want to cop this one after hearing me out for a few minutes. In this game you'll incarnate Persephone, which is the queen of the underworld according to the Greek mythology. She is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter and for some reason Demeter is so in love with her daughter that she doesn't let any man near her. However, Persephone is in love with Hades, king of the underworld, and as you might have guessed, Demeter doesn't really like this. So the game starts with this little cutscene where you approach Hades and he gets kidnapped by your own mother. Your task is now to beat a series of puzzles and free Hades from your own mother. After beating the Persephone story you will also get to play as Demeter herself to see her perspective. From a story perspective this is kinda unnecessary but it does give you 4 extra chapters on top of Persephone's 5. So I'm not really complaining. Anyway, the game's core concept is pretty straightforward. Get from this point to this point while facing numerous obstacles like weapons and spikes. But in this game, death isn't a failure. Death is used as a means to progress. In fact, without dying, you can't even beat any level. What if you are able to use your dead body as a bridge to cross the spikes or as an object to push a button? That is essentially the question the game is asking to the player. In a regular game you're always thinking about circumventing death, and now that death is a tool, it suddenly opens up a whole new dimension of ideas and mechanics. Now, while this would be a broken feature if the amount of deaths was infinite, they luckily aren't. You have 4 bodies available per level, 3 dead and 1 alive. If you already have 3 bodies scattered around the level and you die, the first one will simply disappear and be replaced by the fresh carcass. This makes it so that you really have to think strategically about the placements of your bodies, where you choose to die and where you push the dead body towards. One of the best examples is in this Demeter level. I couldn't for the love of me find out what the game wanted me to do at all. The exit was in between the stone blocks and the slippery goo tiles made it impossible for me to stop in front of the exit. Then I figured out you had to die twice and push the dead bodies to these specific spots to make them function as walls to stop you sliding past the exit. Tell me, that shit isn't amazing puzzle design. What makes this idea even better is that the deaths don't remain vanilla either. Throughout the game you'll encounter various death abilities that are activated by standing next to these stones. You're introduced to the statue ability that functions as a bridge over the water or as a means to stop the gun from hitting you. You then unlock the fire ability that turns you into a human lighter to light these fuses and last but not least they took a page out of the Legend of Zelda book by implementing an ability that will clone you upon dying, mimicking every step of your actual body. 
On top of that, every level provides you with an interactive environment that you will need to cooperate with, or you will simply lock yourself out of ever completing it. Whether this is in the form of these pushable boxes, these tiles that break after you step on them, or these teleporters. These objects or tiles you can interact with in combination with the different abilities make for a fantastic puzzle game that really pushes you to think outside of the box. Uh, pun intended. The fact that you can only have three dead bodies on the map at any one time really makes for a mechanic that allows Persephone to stand out as an excellent puzzle game. Through it, especially later on in the game, Momopai has created a bunch of challenging puzzles where you need to experiment with the placements of your body and juggling them around to progress through different sections of a level. The only way to figure out where to place them and how to solve the level is simply by trial and error. In fact, even the new mechanics and objects that are introduced don't come with an instruction form. The entire game has zero text boxes, encouraging you to just figure everything out by yourself. The way they approach this zero text idea is nothing else than admirable, especially when it comes to the abilities. During the Persephone storyline a new ability is introduced every chapter, which feels like the exact right pace to keep things interesting without overwhelming the player. The first batch of levels of every chapter are fairly easy and function as a way to make you familiar with a new mechanic or a new ability. Just like with school or work stuff, I deem practice to be much more valuable than reading a manual or doing a basic tutorial. After the first few levels of every chapter, the levels then quickly become a mishmash of different abilities, objects and environments. You'll need to experiment and interact with the provided environment and the abilities in order to progress, after which you'll need to plan a pretty precise route if you want to have a chance at reaching the end. Most of the levels have boxes that will only spawn once, tiles that will only break once before disappearing forever, and let's not forget about all the levels in the hell themed chapter where you need to light a specific fuse pattern in order to progress. Fuck up once and you can simply reset the entire level. Good luck! Especially in the later levels the resets can become very frustrating. Not just because of messing up any interaction with an object or the environment, but more so because of your own body placement. On top of deciding where to die, you also need to figure out when to die. If you screw up even once, a body that was resting on a button or providing a pathway over some spikes might simply disappear and you can start over. In some of the levels the exact order of your deaths even matters and you will need to restart if you mess up the order at any point. I was only recording audio in this clip, but at this very moment I was hitting my desk so fucking hard that my hand hurt for a few minutes. And I still never felt like I wasn't having a good time. I'm just kinda short tempered. Leave me alone, okay? I think the developers were very aware of the frustration these puzzles can cause, because they deliberately contribute to it. You see, these developers are fucking rats that just want to see you hurt. In this one level they provide you with three stones that are part of a fuse maze. You need to push the right stones into the right holes in order to create a path that will burn the boxes blocking your way upon lighting it. I tried every single combination before figuring out there was no solution with three stones and you only needed to use two to progress. They just put that extra one there to waste your time. Absolute rats. There is one puzzle that is even worse though, and that's simply because they marinate you in the levels prior to it. In chapter 3 they continuously teach you to use these boxes as a means to cross these small rivers. You either push the box into the river to activate a timed event, where you have to take an exact amount of steps in order to use the box as a bridge, or you use the stone ability to stop the box from being able to move any further, so it can function as a permanent bridge. Then in the bonus level they throw everything they've taught you in the levels prior out of the window. In this level, you're not supposed to use the box as a bridge. You're supposed to push the box onto the button so the gun can shoot the tentacle. Because they've taught you anything but that in the levels prior, this is the last thing you ever think about. I was under the impression that I still had to use the box as a bridge and that I was supposed to push one of the statues onto the button. Which went a little something like this.
It took me forever before I realized that you would always need 4 statues in order to make that work and that you were supposed to push the button with the box. These developers are straight up evil and I absolutely love it. Even though they are evil, they made the game function in a way that you are at least allowed to think before you mess up. This game is turn based, which means the entire level just freezes until you take the next step. Being able to think mid level really relieves a lot of stress and it gives you the option to think about how dumb you really are and why you should reset immediately. And if you are truly getting frustrated and are unable to find the solution, you can always press this question mark that appears after resetting a couple of times. Once you press this question mark, you will be shown a sped up video that contains the exact solution to whatever puzzle you're stuck on. I ended up using this twice in the entire game, one of them being this level. There are just so many boxes in this one. So many boxes. I tried to push them in the right order, but it just went like eh, 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 eh. and my smooth brain really couldn't figure it out. And thus, the solution function was a very welcome feature. Anyway, Momopai managed to successfully combine all of these features in the most interesting ways, in order to create some of the coolest and most unique puzzles. The game feels fresh and incredibly enjoyable from the start until the very last level. This is especially impressive when you consider the game as dozens upon dozens of levels. Persephone's story consists of 5 chapters and Demeter's story consists of 4 chapters with 11 to 13 levels each. All of them also have a bonus level that can be unlocked by finding a secret exit in one of the levels, like this one where you need to land on this specific teleporter. These bonus levels fit the characters really well since they are based on their quote unquote powers in the Greek mythology. You see, Demeter is the goddess of agriculture and crops and the bonus levels make use of this in a very fun way. When you're playing as Persephone you'll enter these bonus levels where a giant plant has taken over the level and you're supposed to enable the guns to shoot its tentacles by removing a bunch of obstacles. Then in Demeter's story you do the exact opposite. You get to create the tentacle traps you defeated in the previous storyline by walking on these specific tiles. I personally found these bonus levels to be the most challenging and most fun levels out of the bunch. They really make your brain run at its maximum capacity in order to beat them. If you're interested in playing this game yourself, I'd highly suggest looking out for these secret pathways to bonus levels, since they're most certainly worth your time. Anyway, if you're able to do basic math, you have probably figured out that this means there are over 100 levels in this game. The fact that none of them even feels or functions remotely the same really shows how well thought out this game actually is. And with this, I don't just mean the variety in puzzles, but also just the objects and environments themselves. It doesn't take a genius to observe that the developers at Momopai put a lot of thought into these environments and where to use certain objects and tiles. The environments of all the different chapters look great and feel distinct from each other and objects, styles and abilities are often thematic and complement their respective environments very well. Although these different levels feel distinct from each other, they never feel like they're not connected to each other. All of the different chapters truly do feel like they are connected with one another and part of the journey that both Persephone and Demeter go through. In the Persephone story you start in a green valley, then in order to find Hades you travel through the stone mountains, you defy the frozen land, you then descend to and make your way through the burning caverns of hell in order to reach the underworld of which Hades is the god. In the Demeter story you then start in Demeter's garden, after which she defies the desert and the underground pine forest in order to get to the underworld where she can find Hades. You truly feel like you're experiencing an adventure without actually seeing any cutscenes. And I think this cohesive feeling really makes me think higher of this game. But let's not forget about the music either. The different tracks in all of the levels are all very calm and quite slow paced, as they should be in a game where you're required to think. 
The music fits the calmness of the gameplay very well and none of the tracks feel unfitting in their respective environments. One thing I really like is that the music that's playing in the levels is very noticeable, yet it never distracts you from your thought process or even comes close to feeling repetitive or annoying. The different tracks are very calming and I found myself humming along plenty of times while having absolutely no idea what the solution to a certain puzzle was. Each chapter has its own distinct track and a new track every 11 to 13 puzzles is just enough variation to prevent the player from getting bored of any of them. All in all I can say that Persephone is one of my favorite puzzle games I have ever played. The chapters are beautifully designed, the music fits the game perfectly and the unique feature of using death as a means to progress most certainly elevates this puzzle game to a new level. Because there are no text boxes in the entire game, the game encourages experimentation in the form of trial and error in order to figure out how this game works, which is something many puzzle games can learn from. To me, it's very hard to say anything negative about this game. One could argue that there is a need for an undo button, since there is no way to go back when you misclick or press the wrong arrow button. However, this was such a minor inconvenience that I can count the instances of this happening on one hand. Other than that, they possibly could have included multiple difficulties. I'd consider the current puzzles medium in terms of difficulty, and while this is more than enough for a smooth brain like me, harder puzzles would certainly make the game more appealing to veteran puzzlers. Then again, this game is only 7 bucks on Steam, so something like that should definitely come with a higher price. Maybe like 10 to 15 bucks considering you're literally doubling the puzzles. I don't know. Other than that, if you're looking for a fun and unique puzzle game to play, I'd highly recommend this refreshingly unique title. For 7 bucks, this game is an absolute fucking steal. And I think... That's where I'll leave it at. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. If you like this video, definitely leave a like rating. If you liked it even more than definitely, hit that subscribe button. This game is worth your time, it's only 7 bucks, go fucking buy it. Maybe buy it on like a steam sale or whatever. Just do it man. Just fucking do it. Anyway, i see you all in the next one. Peace!